Hello and welcome back to a new video. Today I'm gonna rank all of the Battlefield 2042 maps from worst to best. But before the video begins, I have to say, this whole list is based on my personal opinion and how I like these maps. I'm gonna rank only the new maps from the Battlefield 2042 era because the older maps from the older games exist in Portal for a reason, because they are all fan favorites. Also, when a map gets a bad place on this list, this doesn't automatically mean that this map is bad overall. I only compared the aspects with the Conquest game mode, because I play the game on PS4 and there's just no server where Breakthrough is running, so I only had the Conquest experience. Some of them are just better at Breakthrough. I compared them and tried to get such a list. I'm not sure about the right order, but I took the decision as well as I could. Ok, that's everything I wanted to say, so let's begin with the top 10. On the last place is Renewal. So it has a unique design, but at Conquest it is kinda boring. I don't know, I just can't get warm with it. The map is divided in two parts, the desert section and the green section. Some distances in this desert section can be very long if you don't have a vehicle, while in the other area there are many buildings like greenhouses for example. However, in the desert there are some small rocks, hills and dunes where you can get some cover. But if a helicopter for example chases you, then you mostly have no chance. Most of the players are fighting in the other area. As I said, there are many buildings to hide and also some small hills where you can go to the other objectives without being seen. But some distances in the desert section are so big it just isn't worth to go there because you can't find any other soul most of the time, which means you're all alone there. If you don't have a vehicle, then it's also just better to redeploy than running all the way back. On Breakthrough on the other hand, it's much better because the map is divided in smaller pieces so you're probably staying with your team the whole time. Next up on the list is Hourglass. It also looks pretty good, but it's also just too big. There are long distances between some flagpoles and it takes ages to get there without a vehicle. Nevertheless, it has some good areas too, like the village on the far left of the map, which is quite fun. And most of the time, the players are located there or in the city area on the other side, so you can have some good gunfights. But the rest of the map is literally just a desert, with nothing else in it. That means no cover, except of a few dunes, but nothing unique. If you are in that lonely location, then you don't see any other person, except of some sniper scopes and a vehicle that'll kill you short after. So in Conquest, it doesn't work every time. The 8th place goes to Manifest. I quite thought a while about the place of this map in the worst to best ranking. It takes place in the harbor of Singapore. A lot of shipping containers provide a good amount of cover between the different objectives, while vehicles don't have the chance to dominate the battlefield. Nevertheless, if you don't play with an SMG or shotgun, it can be very frustrating between all of that containers, but it also has a more open area, so you can decide if you wanna go into the close combat or challenging the enemies at this open space. But you are kinda forced to stay at the specific area, otherwise, like I said earlier, it can be very frustrating. Also, there is a crane at one point near the containers where you can get on top of it. Even if it's a good position for scouring the map and the movement of the hostile soldiers, the chances are pretty high that you get sniped very fast. So basically, it's a solid map. It's not bad, but it's also not great. I'm just not sure where to put it on the list, so I decided to take it to this place. Next up on the list is Breakaway. When I saw this map first, I thought it's gonna be a map like Silk Road from Battlefield 4, where you simply don't have much fun if you don't play with a sniper rifle or sitting in a vehicle. I have to say, I like snow maps, so I wanted to give it a try. It turned out that I really enjoyed this map, especially the area where the A and B sector are. There are a lot of buildings, so you can have some good gunfights without thinking this map is just a running simulator, as I first thought it was supposed to be. Some areas on this map are pretty empty, like the other maps. But because it takes place in the Antarctic, it fits because these zones are hostile to life, so it's just realistic. The A and B sectors are literally next to each other, so you can just imagine that the other flags don't exist and stay here for the whole game. But if you like driving vehicles, then you definitely get your fun on this map too. It also got a little bit improved with the last update, so now it's even better. The sixth place of this ranking is Kaleidoscope. So if you play Conquest, this map is a little bit smaller than the other ones, and that's the reason why it is so high up in the list. There is the possibility to hop into vehicles like tanks or choppers, but if you do that, you can only attack the A sector completely, so this means the other flag points are inside of buildings. Because of that, you can have great infantry fights there. As I said, the layout is pretty mixed up. 
you have the close combat areas, but also the longer ranges. That is a good thing, because you can't spawn so many tanks. They are mostly for covering fire while the other players have the chance to attack one objective. Please don't get me wrong, I like the vehicles. They give a better feeling of how it is being on a battlefield, but on many maps, like I said before, on Silk Road from Battlefield 4 for example, there are just too many, so it can be really frustrating to get killed by a tank or chopper over and over again. Also, another annoying thing are the rooftop campers again, but luckily, there are not as many as they were in Battlefield 4. Overall, a good looking map, which is fun to play. So now, we're entering the top 5. And the first one on this list is Orbital. I'm sure many people don't really like this map, but for me it's good. It was the beta map and also my first contact with the game. On next gen consoles it's also quite big, but to be honest, I really enjoyed this map back in the beta and also in the full game. You have much buildings on the flagpoles and between them there is a lot of open space for vehicles like tanks or helicopters. Also, you can go into that big skyscraper or on the rooftop. Two flags are located there and also the most part of the players, because you can have close combat in this building. But you can get some kills with a sniper rifle at open spots too. Or you get in a tank and cover the other teammates capturing the points. The other objectives are kind of a circle around that big ramp where vehicle players can also get some kills there. If the flags in and on the skyscraper are captured, then the fight continues between these other points. In my opinion, it can be very atmospheric to run over the ramp and try to avoid all kinds of bullets. Also, the whole thing with that rocket going up and explodes looks quite cool at the beginning. Even if I don't think this map will be a fan favorite, I'm sure that will be one of the more memorable maps of this game. Coming up to the fourth place. And now it's kinda difficult, because the next two maps could be reversed in their positions. So, I chose this card next. This map is very similar like the other map, so that's the reason these two maps are so close together in this ranking. It seems like it's pretty much open and big at the first look, but it turns out that it has just a great size. There aren't too many vehicles, so this map is more infantry based. There are not many hills to hide behind, but many parts of destroyed boats can be used for cover too. Also, the bigger parts of different boats have several floors, so you can get a bigger field of view and try to stop attacking enemies. Some flags are pretty much open, so you can get shot from multiple directions. But nevertheless, it's a great map and deserves this place on the list. Now we're entering the top 3, and I think most of you already know what map comes next. It's Stranded. Like I already said, it could be reversed, but I think this map is a little bit better than discarded for multiple reasons. It is even smaller than the map of the first season exposure. But that's not a problem at all, because many players complain about the size of the launch maps. I'm glad DICE used the feedback and made this map smaller. Thanks to that, they have been able to concentrate on adding some optical stuff like surface details or grass all over the map. It is located in Panama. Some hills and rocks give good cover to capture the objectives on the different sides of this map. In the center, there is a big stranded container ship, which has several flag points. I really like the fact that this map features a mix of both open and narrow areas. The layout plays to both long range and close combat depending on your spawn point. A big communication tower behind the ship, which is the highest point on this map, can be used to spot hostile movement and vehicles. But pay attention, you may get sniped if you are staying on this tower for too long. The next map on this list is Spearhead. So this is the latest map, which came with Season 3. For me, I really like the looks of it. You have a kinda open area, but with many small natural trenches for cover while you go to the objective. On the other side, you have these two huge buildings that are supposed to be some kind of weapon factories, I guess. This map is kind of divided into two areas, which are separated by a river. The flags are on both sides. Also, the river and the small trenches connect all of the objectives. In the central and easternmost zones are these large buildings, whose bay doors fold open as you approach them. The amount of players is nearly balanced all around the map, thanks to its size. Some vehicles support the people trying to capture the flags outside of the building. Inside of them, there is only player versus player, so a good mix of everything. And because of the smaller amount of vehicles on this map, you possibly could go wherever you wanna go without getting killed by a tank or a chopper in a few seconds. There we are. We reached the number one spot on this list. And this easily goes to... Exposure. Just the look of it is awesome. In my opinion, it has a great and unique design. 
there are three different areas, the hilltop military base, the valley in the south and the underground facility with some tunnels. It's a mix of a meat grinder section in the inner areas and also on top of the map some open space for vehicles. The big highlight is the hillside in the middle of the map. It's so much fun to climb it up or defending it from enemy players. You can decide if you wanna grab a full auto rifle and fight at close combat or grab a sniper rifle or vehicle and try to conquer the other flags around this military base. I've heard that DICE used the feedback of the fans once again like they did with their community operations in Battlefield 4 and I'm glad they made it and created a great map once again. I can't really say something negative about this map so for me this is the first place without a doubt and deserves the number one spot. So guys, this is my list of the current maps in Battlefield 2042. I hope some great ones will follow, but I'm sure based on the maps they release with every season, DICE will do a great job there and give us more awesome maps. The next map is already leaked from a Battlefield Insider with the name Temporial on Twitter and he says that it will be called Flashpoint, a business park in South Africa with construction sites and a big tunnel. But I don't wanna say too much things because I don't know if it's true or not, but we'll see. I'm gonna put the link to his Twitter into the description so you can take a look at the new stuff that perhaps will come, if you wanna know it. But that's it for the video, thank you so much for watching, tell me your favorite or least favorite map of Battlefield 2042. I'm really excited if you have the same or different opinion like me, so let me know. As I said, thanks for watching, I'm out, goodbye.